Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, good evening, whatever time of day it happens to be, wherever you are at. Let me see if I can pin this comment. There we go. I think I was just tapping the screen the wrong way. All right, so we got our comment pinned. If you want to get my daily motivation text, make sure you text me at that number right there. And we're going to get into this in a few seconds and make sure I can see my screens. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope everyone's had a good start to your second half. We're in the second half now. We're in the third quarter of 2022. Hope everybody has written down some goals. If you didn't already have goals, you wrote down some goals for the second half of the year. And if you did have goals, you have checked your goals to see where you're at and what you've been up to. And you shout yourselves out in the comment section. What's going on? Brandon over there on Facebook. Uh, Devin in North Carolina. Um, Andrea said the daily motivation today was amazing. Shout out to everybody who's already getting the daily motivation. Thank you, Andrea. Shout out to everybody who is about to get the daily motivation by texting me at my number 305-384-6894. If you're on Facebook, let me leave a comment on Facebook too. On Facebook, you want to get the daily motivation text. And by the way, my Facebook is just Facebook slash work on your game. For those of you who are on Instagram, if y'all are Facebook users as well, just uh, go to my Facebook page because there's some things Facebook can do that Instagram cannot. Not that it can actually, that it just doesn't do. So if you want to get uh, some stuff on Facebook that I don't always post, like articles and things like that, because I am a writer. I don't know if any of y'all know that, but I do a good amount of writing. So that is on Facebook. I don't really put that all on IG that often, or I can't put the whole thing on IG. Don't hold enough space. Uh, Oklahoma City, Belford Williams. Shout out to Oklahoma City in the house. Are right, we going to get into it? Because as you can see, we're doing the 12 Work On Your Game commandments. That's a lot of commandments. We want to get this done in uh, an hour or less. So let's get right into it. Uh, all y'all who don't know me, even if you do, let me reintroduce myself because you might have forgot. My name is Dre Baldwin. I'm a former nine-year professional athlete. I'm the author of 31 books, including that book right there called Work On Your Game. Both of y'all can see that on the screen wherever you're at. I'm the and the third day. That's my newest book. That's the red book right here over my right shoulder. I'm the creator of this whole brand and philosophy called Work on Your Game, in which I took the attributes and the skills and the tools that I learned as a professional athlete, and I created a framework and a system that translates those tools from the sports world to the business world and into everyday life. And that is what I do professionally now, working with professionals from all industries, people who are serious about taking your game to the next level, and you want a process and a system for doing it. You don't want to just randomly do it. And of course, the foundation of that is the mindset, but then we take it to the next levels of strategy, getting strategic about what you're doing, then making sure you're being held accountable, and then the execution of actually getting these things done. So if I'm speaking your language with that, then what you should probably do is send me a DM or a text message, or just go to workonyourgameuniversity.com so you can start working with me directly, and I can show you how we can take your game, whatever that game happens to be, to the next level. So now, as I already told you, we get into the 12 working your game commandments. That's a lot of commandments. And as y'all know, I like to give a, some context to each one of these. So let's get right into it so I don't have to uh, take up too much more time before we even get into the point. So I'm going to go through all 12 of these one at a time. There's actually 13 of them. I, I said 12, but then when I was actually going through these, I found out it was 13. So I miscounted. But anyway, I'm going to give you all of them today. Let's get to it. Number one, commandment to work on your game. These are in no particular order. Number one is complete ownership. Thank you for that badge slash specific. Number one commandment of work on your game is complete ownership. What does that mean? That means whatever your situation is, wherever you are, however you ended up there, you are 100% responsible for the situation. You're 100% responsible for changing the situation, altering or continuing and extending the situation. Whatever you choose to do with it, you are 100% responsible for it. Even if it was not your fault, it is your responsibility. That is what complete ownership means. Meaning, it is not your fault that you're, you're born to whoever your parents are. It is not your fault that you are male or female. It is not your fault that you are gay or straight. It is not your fault that you are tall or short, black or white, whatever country you're from. It is not your fault. None of those things are your fault. None of them were your choice even. But once you realize that that's the situation that you're in, then you are responsible for doing something about the situation. That is what complete ownership means. Everybody understand that. Myself, for example, I, I told you my background is in sports. My parents are not athletes. I mean, they, I mean, my dad likes sports, but he's not an athlete. My dad's not even that tall. My dad's like five, seven. My dad's like five, eight, maybe, maybe five, nine. I don't know. But at the height, he ain't no taller than five, nine. 
I have one sister. She's not an athlete. My mom's not an athlete. I wanted to become an athlete and I was tall and I had the athletic genes, but I didn't have anybody teaching me. I didn't have any coaches. I didn't have any trainers. Nobody invested in me. I didn't have any personal trainers growing up. I didn't have access to a, an indoor facility or any of that stuff, but I took ownership of my situation. When I wanted to become an athlete, then it's not even like my parents said, all right, we see that you want to be an athlete. So we're going to drive you around to AAU tournaments and hire coaches for you and buy programs and stuff like that. Like I sell basketball training programs. I wasn't buying any basketball training programs myself when I was growing up. I took ownership of my situation. That's what it means to have complete ownership. Whatever your situation is, you had to take that into your hands and do something about it. A lot of people keep themselves from the success that they could otherwise achieve in life simply because they don't want to take ownership of their situation. And instead of taking ownership, what people do is make excuses, uh, whine and cry about their situation and otherwise just uh, they abdicate from ownership of the situation. And here's the problem with abdicating from ownership of the situation is that you lose power when you don't take responsibility. Understand that power and responsibility are a package deal. They come together. Anytime you get power, you also get responsibility. OK, everybody understand that if you want power in your life, you must take responsibility for your situations. And every time you take responsibility, the more of it you take on, the more power you will have. Everybody follow me. So any of you who wants to get more power in your life, Here's what you should do. Look for ways to take more responsibility. The more responsibility you have on your shoulders, the more power you have. And the more power you have, anybody you know who has power, look at them. They probably have a whole lot of responsibility. Who's the most powerful person in America? Usually it's the, the president, some high ranking government official or maybe some big business owner. Either way, those people have a whole lot of responsibility. And because they have so much responsibility, they also get the power. You cannot have one without the other. All right. So everybody understand that. Number one is complete ownership. Number two, we're talking to 12 work on your game commandments. Number two is accurate formulas. What does this mean? An accurate formula is not the same as a right formula. Understand there's a difference between being right and being accurate. Being right is when you're trying to prove your point and you have an opinion or a view and you want other people to see that your opinion or view is more correct than their opinion or view. That's trying to be right. Being accurate is different. Being accurate means there's an objective measure of what you're talking about. And it's not about you or them or anyone else. It's just that you are reflecting the objective measure of what is accurate and true. OK, so there's a difference between being accurate and being right. So an accurate formula means there's an objective black and white measure of what you're doing. And you're doing things based on that objective measure, based on what is true and what is provable, not on your opinion not on your truth. OK, I posted this on IG a couple of days ago, Facebook as well. There is no such thing as my truth. All right. Any of you who's ever said that phrase, extinguish that phrase. Uh, if you come around here, don't use that phrase around here because I'm going to call you out on it. And I'm not going to allow it. There's no such thing as my truth. OK, there's no such thing as my truth, your truth, anybody else's truth. There's just the truth. There's just a truth, period. All right. There's no two different truths. All right. It's one truth. The truth is what we can prove, what is clear and what is objective. All right. That's what an accurate formula is. Accurate formulas show us exactly where we're supposed to go. They're the map. They're the GPS. All right. So there's no there's no two ways of looking at an accurate formula. There's a, a big difference between these two. And the world that we're living in today and society has done this over the years. But the world that we're living in today, we have so many people coming up with different versions of their truths, like individual truths. All of that is garbage. Throw all of that in the trash. If you hear somebody saying it or you find yourself doing it, throw that in the garbage. There is no my truth. OK, everybody follow that. All right. Operating by accurate formulas requires you to stop doing things based on your emotions and your feelings. See, when people get into this my truth stuff, it's because they're in their feelings and in their emotions. This is what we call feminine energy. And I'm not I don't have a problem with feminine energy, but I do have a problem with feminine energy when it gets in the way of objective, accurate measurements. OK, and. I'm talking about males and females when I say feminine energy. All right, accurate, accurate, objective energy is masculine because we're looking at things straight up and down, black and white as they are. Masculine energy is black and white and objective. Feminine energy is more emotional and feeling. And there's a time and a place for that, but it ain't all the time and it ain't every place. And when we're talking about in the work on your game world, just so everybody understands, if you come deeper into this world that's run by me, we go off of masculine energy, which is objective, accurate, logical, and rational. All right, everybody clear on that? Any questions? Post in the comments if you got one. Many people get so driven these days by their emotions 
and by their feelings, getting into their feminine, I'm talking about males and females, that we never get around to the logical, accurate stuff. And the problem with that is it takes you off the, it takes you off the path. And yeah, you're doing things that affirm you and make you feel good about yourself and about your opinions. The problem is when you're affirming your own opinions, but you're not going off of accurate formulas, you may end up in the wrong place, even though you feel good about what you did. So the question is, do you want things that are going to help you feel good or do you want to do things that are going to help you do good? And sometimes you have to choose between the two. Some of the things that make you feel good are not going to help you do good. So you had to decide which one is more important to you, feeling good or doing good. See, it would feel good to me when the alarm clock goes off in the morning. I don't even use an alarm clock for the most part, but you know, let's just say I had an alarm clock. It would feel good to stay in bed and sleep for another 45 minutes, but it will help me do good if I get up, even though I'm tired, get dressed, go to the gym and get a workout and I'll be in better shape and I'll live longer and I can go you know, run my business and make more money. So sometimes doing things that feel good will not help you do good. Sometimes you can do both, but there are times you have to choose between the two. And the question is for everybody, when you get to the point where push comes to shove and you have to choose between things that help you feel good and things that help you do good, which one would you choose? And you don't have even had to answer this question. Just look at your own life. What are you doing? Are you choosing things that, that affirm you? your truth, whatever the hell that means to you, or the truth. And there is a difference. Moving on, point number three. We're talking to 12, work on your game commandments. Number three is self-honesty. Self-honesty. And again, self-honesty does not mean you just taking anything that you want to believe or anything that you want to affirm and then just twisting your mind around in ways to make it sound right to you. And again, I just told you the difference between being right and being accurate. Self-honesty means you got to be honest about who you are, where you're at, and what needs to change about your situation. Because everybody on the planet, every human being on the planet, we all want something. We are all working towards something. We all want to get better at something. We all have areas for improvement. We all have things that we want to work on. Nobody's situation is completely perfect. Even if you think your situation is perfect, that's probably because you're just not remembering something about your life that's not perfect. We all have something that we need to work on. The challenge for all of us is not whether we have an area for improvement or not. It's whether we're being honest about what that area is and what needs to happen in order for it to change. And a lot of people simply don't want to do the work necessary in order to make change happen in their lives. And listen, that's not a condemnation of people. You're complete. It's completely fine if you want to stay where you're at in life. Everybody who's listening to this right now, if you want to stay where you're at and you don't want to get better and you don't want to do the work to improve, that is your choice. You have free will on this planet. You can be whoever you want to be, do whatever you want to do. And if that doing means doing nothing and being means staying exactly as you are for the next 40 years until you die, you have a right to do that. Now, you have a right to be who you want to be as a person. Just be honest about it. And that was the whole thing when I was talking about the uh, abortion thing when I did the live last week. Let's just be honest about what the situation is. That's what self-honesty is. So, for example, I had somebody who sent me a text maybe about a month ago. And he was, I was saying, what's your biggest challenge right now? He said, well, my challenge, Dre, is waking up early in the morning. And I said, all right, how long have you had that challenge? He said, I've had that challenge my whole life. And I said, what have you done to try to fix the challenge? And he said, well, you know what? I have tried all different kinds of alarm clocks, uh, different ways of waking up. I even put the alarm clock in a different room in my house. So I had to wake up. And he said, what I would do, Dre, is I would wake up, go in the other room, turn off the alarm, then get right back in bed. L-O-L. -L. He's just telling me this whole story, how he tried all this different stuff to wake up early, but he still can't do it. And when he said that, I said to him, well, clearly your problem is not waking up. Your problem is just get it, waking up and staying up because you woke up to turn the alarm clock off. So you clearly, you can do it. It's not that you can't do it. It's just simply you're not cho you're choosing not to do it. And the whole point of this and me telling you that little anecdote is that he wasn't being honest with himself. See, he was saying the problem was this thing over here when the problem is actually this thing over here. And this is where accurate formulas, are we being accurate about what the actual problem is? And are you being honest about where this problem is coming from, what the source of the problem is? You see, when you operate off of inaccurate formulas and you're, you think the problem is over here, but the problem is actually over there, you can solve the problem or what you think the problem is and you're still going to keep having the same issues. This is what happens with a lot of people is that you're answering the wrong question. You get, when you get the right answer to the wrong question, you still going to keep having the same problem. This is why self-honesty matters. You got to be honest with yourself about who you are, where you're at, and what your actual problems are. When I was in high school, I got cut from a high school basketball team freshman year, sophomore year, junior year. I only played one year in my senior year. 
when I wasn't making the team, actually, let me back up before I even get to that. When I got on YouTube, I started putting basketball videos out. A lot of ball players started following me, and I would get messages from basketball players every day. Still do. And basketball players would often come to me with some form of, Dre, I'm not making the team, or I'm not getting playing time, no, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of them would default to blaming the coach. All right, the coach is hating on me. The coach is putting his son in the game before me. The other players on the team won't pass me the ball. And everybody who was telling me about their problems playing sports, playing ball, were all they were all putting their problems on somebody other than themselves. So they were violating all of these principles I've talked about just so far. First of all, they weren't taking ownership of the situation. Secondly, they had an inaccurate formula because they think somebody else is the problem. And third, they weren't being honest about it. You see how they, they were violating all these commandments all at the same time. When I wasn't making the team in high school or I wasn't making my rec teams or I wasn't getting the ball even when I did play, I had to be honest with myself and say, you know, know what I need to do? I need to work on my game. All right, That's why this whole thing is called work on your game. I need to work on my game. And why did I say work on my game? Is it possible that the coach was hating on me? Is it possible? I mean, it's possible. Is it possible that other players didn't like me? It's possible. Is it possible they just didn't want to pass me the ball? It's possible. All of those things are possible. But guess what? If I would have decided that that was the reason why I wasn't having success, how much ownership do I have over those situations? Zero. See, if I think the coach is the problem, I can't control the coach. So therefore, I have no ownership. Therefore, I have no power. Therefore, I have no responsibility. Therefore, I can't do anything about the situation. So any again, this is why I said even if the situation is not your fault and you are truly you are you are positive that is not your fault. You still take ownership of the situation because that's the only way you can have any power to do anything about it. So as soon as I took ownership of the situation and decided I need to work on my game, I got better. Finally made the team, went and played in college and you know the rest became history. And that gave me the credibility and the authority to sit here right now and talk to you just like I used to talk to the ball players and say to them, look, you need to take ownership of your situation. I know it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. And again, fault and responsibility are two different things. But if you don't take responsibility, you can never have power. That's why you got to be honest with yourself about where you're at and what you're doing. All right. So that's the first three. Number four, we are talking to 12 working your game commandments for those who came in the middle of me talking. Number four, the same things, the same way every time. What does this mean? When I open up my work on your game masterclass podcast, which comes out every single day on Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, all y'all probably know about it. If you don't go look it up, I say every day, the discipline to show up day after day to do the work. Understand something about being a professional, folks. The dictionary definition of a professional is a person who gets paid to do something as their main salaried occupation. Like they, this is the main thing you do to make money. That's, a, that's the dictionary definition of a professional. So you have a contract, you get a check, you're, you're on the payroll, et cetera, et cetera. All right, that's one definition of professional. Here's the other definition of professional. Professional is a person who shows up every single time and gets the job done regardless of how they're feeling. That's the real, that's what a real professional is. Cause there are a lot of quote unquote professionals who don't get the job done. All right. Any of you who follow sports, you know, there are players on your, your favorite team who don't show up and get the job done, even though they're still getting paid. So technically they're a professional, but spiritually they're not a professional because they're not showing up and doing the job. All right. They gotta, they gotta, they're not pros. A real pro gets the job done every day. So for example, any of you who's a parent, especially single parents, all right, there are times you probably don't even feel like doing what you got to do for your kid. You know, changing the diaper, waking up in the middle of the night, caring for a sick child, taking a day off from work because your kid is sick, uh, doing all the stuff you got to do to raise a child. There are times you don't feel like doing it, but you do it anyway, right? And there's no salary for doing it. You don't get paid to do it, but you still have to show up and be a professional. So professionalism is about showing up over and over and over again and doing the job. Somebody here mentioned getting married. Well, when you get married, relationships are work, right? And any kind of relationship, a business relationship, a friendship, if you're playing on a team, if you work somewhere with a bunch of people, if you start a business with another person, if you get in an intimate relationship with another person, you got to work on that. And there are some things that are going to be expected of you in that relationship. You don't always feel like doing. But if you don't show up and do those things then the relationship falls apart and that hurts you and it hurts the other person. So understand that professionals operate off of processes. They operate off of systems. They know what they're going to do every single time. Then they show up and they get it done. The thing about a professional is that you know what you're going to get out of them and they do it every time. The reason why LeBron James, for example, is a legendary basketball player is not because of just what he did in the NBA finals that that time or how many points he scored in the one game that you like or the dunks that he can do or how high he can jump. The reason why he's a legend and a bunch of other people as well, I'm just using LeBron as an example, 
is because any game you go to randomly in the middle of the season, you know he's going to show up and you know he's going to get you a certain level of performance as a baseline every single time. You see how they talk about floors and ceilings. See, the floor, and metaphorically speaking, the floor is like the baseline minimum level you can expect from a person. The ceiling is the height, the highest possible thing you can expect from a person. A professional has a very high floor. Not a high ceiling, a high floor. Yeah, they do have a high ceiling too. But we're talking about the floor. See, a, a professional, there's a baseline level of performance you're going to get from them every single time. Even on their bad days, they still perform at a certain level. Now, see, the amateur, their floor is all the way down in the basement. Their ceiling could be all the way up there, but their floor is down in the basement. They may have a terrible day where they do nothing and achieve nothing. But a professional, their baseline is all the way up here. I mean, their bad days are better than most people's good days. That's what being, that's what doing the same things the same way every time means. Think about a company like uh, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. You know every single time you go in there, any of you who drink Starbucks, does that coffee taste exactly the same every single time? You go to any different Starbucks, it's going to taste exactly the same. You go to Burger King or McDonald's, you order a Big Mac from three different McDonald's in your town, the burger is going to look exactly the same, taste exactly the same, no matter which one you get it from. That is a process. That's a system. That's why McDonald's has served you no know, 10 billion hamburgers in their lifetime, because they do the same things the same way every time. Number five, we are talking 12 working your game commandments. Number five is action bias over contemplation. This one's pretty simple. That means when there is something that you could do or you're thinking about doing, you have the bias of actually taking action and doing something over thinking about it, planning it, considering it, uh, looking it up, looking into it and all the others, hoping all the other stuff that people do when they're doing a whole bunch of nothing. Action biases means you are more inclined to take action than you are to not take action. That's a simple enough one everybody understands, right? I talk to people sometimes and they tell me some challenge that they have and I say, well, have you thought about doing this or this or this? And I'll offer some suggestion or something. And they'll say, yeah, Dre, I thought about it. Yeah, thinking about it, what does that do for you? All right, how many of you have ever achieved the goal simply by thinking about it? Now, I know you can achieve the goal by thinking and then doing something, but I mean, if you just think and you don't do anything, how many of you have ever achieved anything just by thinking about something? I think the answer for all of us is no. So thinking about it, checking it out, considering it, looking it up, uh, Googling it, talking to your friends about it, none of those things achieve outcomes. So if you call yourself doing that and you're looking at that as if it's an accomplishment, stop. That's an inaccurate form of that is not an accomplishment. Accomplishments are actions, people, actions, verbs. You know what a verb is? It's an action word. That means you actually did something. All right, thinking about things, is not doing something. It's not, I'm not saying it's wrong to think, but understand that thinking needs to be followed by action. What actions are you taking to actually achieve your outcomes every single day? The principle is be, do, have in that order. You get your mind in the right space. That's the thinking part. Then you go do stuff. That's the action. Then you get the results. But without the action, you can't get the results. So make sure you have an action bias. Don't just sit around contemplating, thinking about looking up, researching the things that you're going to do. Do that stuff, but then you got to follow it with action. Number six, we're on the 12 work on your game commandments here today. Number six is being overdoing right on time. A lot of people, most of you understand the concept of goal setting. You understand, you at least understand wanting things, even if you don't write down goals. Everybody here understands the concept of things that you want. What do you want? Where do you want to be in five years? Or do you want to be successful? Do you want to you know, have things for your family? Do you want to have things for yourself? Most of you understand that. And most of you understand that in order to get things, you have to do something. You can't get something for nothing. Most people by eight years old, they understand that concept. The challenge for many of us is that you never ask yourself the key question, though. Who do I need to be? Who do I need to be is about your energy and your being and how you're showing up on a day to day basis. That's about, about the way you have programmed your subconscious mind, which is thinking for you even when you're not thinking. That's what the subconscious mind is doing. It's thinking even when you're asleep. This is why you have to program it. And this is why I wrote my book, The Mental Workbook. And the Mental Workbook is all about programming the, sub programming the subconscious mind for who you need to be as a person so that it will help you carry out the actions that you want to take in order to get the outcomes that you want in life. And understand that 85% of your thoughts and your actions are habitual and unconscious, meaning you don't even know that you're thinking them and you just do them automatically. Or you do them involuntarily. That's why you want to get control of your subconscious mind because the subconscious mind is what controls those habitual involuntary thoughts. 
So if you had 85% of your thoughts leading towards success, towards money, towards achievement, towards whatever outcomes you want, wouldn't that help you get more success than if you only got to control the 15% that is conscious? I would think so. So if you haven't read the mental workbook, I would suggest you go do it because I just told you that in that book, I help you lay out the process. You get it at, if you go to thirddaybook.com, on the second page in that funnel, third page in the funnel, we're going to offer you the super duper bundle, which is bulletproof mindset, 30 days of discipline, work on your game and the mental workbook. Just say yes. The $4 bundle, $97. We'll send it as part of your shipment. You get 12 books out of that funnel, by the way. So being overdoing, make sure you get your being right, your mindset every single day. This is conditioned. All right. Just like taking a bath, just like going to the gym, just like, you know, eating food. You don't do it just one time. You do it over and over and over again so you can stay in the right state. That is the mindset thing. And this matters. This is all of life. The foundation of success in life is mindset. Every The foundation of failure is mindset. So if you are not doing something with your mindset, then that means the universe, the world is just controlling it. The environment, you're in neutral, which means you'll have some good days, some bad days. Sometimes it's working. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you feel great. Sometimes you feel terrible. If you found your life is looking like that, that's because you have not taken conscious control of your mindset. But there is a way to do it. I wrote books about it. Every book that I write is about that. Number seven, we are talking the 12 work on your game commandments. Number seven is the open market commandment, which means you are only as good as who or what you go up against in order to get what you have. In other words, if you're born on third base and you didn't have to earn your way to a certain level of success, then it's not it is not as valuable as a person who had to earn it from first base or earn it from home plate or earn it from outside of the stadium. Another way of saying this, because maybe you're born on third base and it's not your fault. Again, not your fault is your responsibility. Here's what you can do. If you're born on third base, you got to show up to where is that you got to go to where is that? And you got to prove that you are as good as the, the newspaper clippings or as your brand says you are. You got to go to where the competition is and you got to beat the competition. You are only as good as who or what you defeat. When I was in college, for example, I played college at a division three college and I felt like I was a pretty good player. The challenge was I was playing at the D3 level and most of the players who I played against were not pro level players. So even though I didn't set the world on fire in college, even if I had, because I had some teammates who did have great stats in college. Once we got out of college, no pro team cared about any of our stats because we were playing against guys who weren't pro level. So even if I'd average 30, it wasn't going to get me a a good look in the pros based on the, the conference that I was coming from. So I knew when I got out of school, I was going to have to go to an exposure camp, which is basically a job fair for ball players, and play against players who have played at higher levels so I could prove that I was good enough to play against better players than what I had faced in college. So I had to spend my own money, go to an exposure camp, prove myself against higher level players, and that's how I was able to get into the game. I had to go to where it was at. I had to show up where the marketplace was demanding, I showed up so I could prove that I was good enough to compete in that particular market. And this is what all of us have to do. All right, real champions, you gotta win your championships in the open market, meaning you gotta go to where it's at, go to where the competition is wide open, where anybody can step in and prove that you're good there. Not just in a controlled environment where it's all set up for you to be successful. That's cool for you to build up your confidence and to you know, build your record and you know, feel like you're good, but you gotta go to where the competition's actually at. In boxing, for example, when a new boxer becomes pro, they usually fight their first few fights, their first 10, 15 fights against a bunch of guys that aren't really that good. They might fight journeymen, people who've been in like 20 fights, but they got like a 500 record and they'll beat all them up just so they can build up their confidence and build up their record and build up some momentum. But eventually to be a champion, who you got to fight? You got to fight the champion. You got to fight somebody else who beat up everybody too. You got to be in a situation where you can lose a real champion is not a champion until you're in a position where it looks like you can lose, but you end up winning. All right. That is the open market commandment. You got to go to where you can get beat, but you don't get beat. All right. That's what makes you a champion. If you haven't been in that situation yet, you are not yet a champion. Doesn't mean you're not good. Doesn't mean you can't become a champion, but you're not one yet until you go somewhere where you can be beat and then you win. Number eight, we're on the 12 work on your game commandments. This is the preparation commandment. What does this mean? All professionals and high level performers are always prepared ahead of time up for a situation. Amateurs show up at a situation, then they try to figure it out once they get there. Professionals understand what the situation is going to be before they get there and they prepare before the situation. So, for example, if you're going to go give a speech, you don't just show up there and just try to come up with a speech right there on the stage. You prepare ahead of time and have an idea of what you're going to say, maybe even know your whole speech before you get there. 
a, an athlete. Athletes don't just show up to the game or a, a fighter doesn't show up to a fight and then just try to figure out what they're going to do once they get into the ring. They prepare ahead of time. They get in shape ahead of time. They do a whole training camp. That's why sports has training camp, right? Football training camp is about to start really soon, right? Basketball has training camp. Boxers have training camp. MMA has training camp. Baseball has training camp. Every professional sport has a training camp. Why? So the professional players can get ready for the competition that's coming up in a month or two. This is the same thing that all of you professionals need to be doing. Do you have a training camp to get yourself ready for the professional work that you're going to need to do? Any of you who's a salesperson, you don't show up at a sales conversation not having any idea how you want that conversation to go. You have an idea of the questions that you're going to ask the prospect. You have an idea how you want to move the conversation along. You have an idea how you're going to in introduce the product or if they already know about the product, introduce the price and how you're going to handle their objections and what you're going to say if they say this. Uh, you're going to respond to that. You plan for that. You don't just show up and randomly hope that it works out. Professionals all prepare ahead of time for anything that they're going to do. So any of you, you want to be a professional at what you do or you think you are a professional, ask yourself, are you preparing ahead of time or are you just showing up and hoping to get lucky? Number nine, we're on the 12 working your game commandments. Number nine is what we call the third day commandment. Y'all know about the third day. That is my latest book. It is this book right here, The Decision That Separates the Pros from the Amateurs. You can get a free copy of this book by going to thirddaybook.com. It is the link in my bio on Instagram. It's one of the links also on my Facebook page. The third day commandment means, first of all, what's the third day? The third day is any situation in life when the newness has worn off, the novelty of the situation is gone, you realize that this thing that you signed up for, this job, this career, this business, this relationship, it is not all fun and games. There is some real work that needs to be done. And now, you got to decide if you're going to do the work or not. That is the third day. The decision that you make in that moment when you realize, okay, this is not just one big party. This is not the, this is not Disney World. I actually had to do some work here to make this work. That's the third day. Do you show up or not on that day? Do you show up or not in that moment? That is the third day. If you're going to be a professional, if you're going to be serious about working on your game, you must understand the value of the third day and you must show up on the third day. If you're going to work with me, you must show up on the third day because I guarantee you, if you're working with me, I'm going to put you in some third days. You're going to get into some third day situations where you're going to realize this is not all fun and games. There's some actual work that I got to do here. And we're going to find out, do you want to do that work or you just want to play around or you just want to you know, post on Instagram and look good, but you don't want to actually do the work that allows you to really have something behind that looking good. That's what the third day is about. Are you showing up in those moments when the situation is not all going in your favor. That is what the third day is about. How many third days have you showed up to understand something about professionals? They show up on the third day. What separates the pros from the amateurs is what you do on the third day. Everybody shows up when everything's working and everything's going good. Your business is popping off. You're making sales every day. You're making money hand over fist. Who doesn't show up in that moment? Everybody shows up then. What do you do when your product is not selling? What do you do when nobody's responding to your emails? What do you do when you're not getting the, the, the engagement on your content that you want to get? What do you do when your product is just not getting any kind of response from the marketplace? What do you do when you're trying to get that job or you're trying to launch this thing and nothing's happening and you're getting crickets from the outside world? Do you show up then? That's the third day. And that's what separates the pros from the amateurs. Commandment number 10. We are talking to 10 to 12 working your game commandments. It was actually 13. Number 10 is the mental toughness commandment, which is a close relative of the third day. Understand something. No matter how talented you are, no matter how hard you work, no matter how many systems and processes you have in place, there will come a time when the thing that you plan is simply not working. There will come a time when the stuff you're trying just ain't popping off. I had many situations like this when things were simply not popping off. I wrote about it in my book, Work On Your Game, this book right here. In 2007, I was trying to get back into pro basketball. I didn't have a job. And I'm you know, reaching out to agents, I'm reaching out to teams, and just nothing was popping off. And I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send a bunch of emails out every single day, and I'm going to keep doing this until I get a contract. I sent 10,000 emails over the course of four months trying to get a deal. Now, some people ask, well, Jerry, how could you send 10,000 emails? There's not 10,000 pro basketball teams in the world. How did you possibly, how could you possibly send out 10,000 emails? Well, easy, because I sent emails to every team that I could find over and over and over again. And I kept trying different subject lines, different content, different emails, not emails, different uh, links, because I put I'll put video links and stuff in there just to see what got a response. And finally, I got one team to respond. I ended up negotiating with them. And that's how I got my deal in uh, Montenegro at the end of 2007. And that was all based on the fact that I decided 
key word, decided that I was going to keep going at that until I figured it out, until I got it to work. Not I was going to try, not I was going to see, not I was hoping, I decided. And the key word in decision, the root word decision is incision. What does incision mean? It means to cut off other possibilities. I decided that this is what I was going to do and I was going to keep doing it. And there's another key word until I figured it out. The key words of mental toughness are decision and until. You just put those two words, just use those two words in a sentence. That'll give you your mental toughness right there. Decision and until. I made the decision. I'm going to keep working on this until I figure it out. There you go right there. Use those words in a sentence and you understand where mental toughness is coming from and where it's going to go for you. Number 11. I put number 10 twice. That's how I got the 13. Number 11. We're on the 12 working your game commandments. This is the selling yourself commandment. This is a very important one. I, lo I love this commandment right here because a lot of people don't understand this, especially with social media out these days. A lot of people have forgotten this one, really not not understand, just forgotten it. That the world is not going to be the path to your door just because you built a better mousetrap. Just because your stuff is good and you're good and you work hard and you believe in yourself and you think your thing is valuable does not mean anybody. And I mean, anybody is going to buy it. Nobody's going to buy. And when I say buy, I don't necessarily mean with money. Uh, people got to buy with their attention. People have to buy with their energy. People have to buy with their focus. If you want someone to pay attention to you, you have to go out and you have to sell them on giving you their attention. You have to sell people on paying attention to you. If nobody's knocking on your door or calling your phone, guess what you got to do? You got to go knock on some doors and ring some phones. Let me say that one again. This is a very important point, especially for you. It's for everybody, actually. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. If you're trying to get a job, if you are an entrepreneur, if you're trying to get a date, it doesn't matter. If nobody's calling your phone or knocking on your door, you got to go call some phones and knock on some doors because they are not going to come to you. All right. There's a there was a saying back in the day. If you build a better mousetrap, the world will be the path to your door. That is a lie. No, they will not. You build a better mousetrap. Nothing's going to happen. The mice not even going to come to your mousetrap just because you built a good mousetrap. You got to get that. You got to tell the mice to come. Any of you seen one of those back in the days, at least, I don't know what they do now with mouse, mouse traps. Actually, I've seen a video on YouTube, but if you have a mouse trap, what do you do with a mouse trap to attract the mice? You put some cheese on it, right? You put some food on it so that the mouse comes. You got to sell the mouse to come to the mouse trap. Just because you have a mouse trap doesn't mean the mice are going to come. If you write an amazing book, but like, you see these books behind me, just because I wrote books doesn't mean anybody's going to buy them. Just because I wrote books doesn't mean anybody's going to read them. How do I get people to read my books? All right, y'all see my ads on IG or on Facebook? I run ads. I'm selling you on looking at the book. I got to sell you in order to get into where I want to get into. When I wanted to get into pro basketball, I had to sell myself. I just told you, I sent 10,000 emails in, in 2007 trying to get on. When I wanted to get first get on, I had to sell myself. I had to spend $250 in cash to pay for exposure camp. Me and my, a couple of my teammates rented a car. We drove from Philly to Orlando. That's a 19-hour drive. Hopped out the car for a two-day event that just gave us an opportunity to maybe get on. They didn't say you're guaranteed to get on if you show up. Maybe you'll get on if you play well enough, but we don't control that. We're offering you no guarantees, but we will give you an opportunity and you got to pay us for the opportunity. That's the selling yourself commandment. My question to you is, well, whatever you're trying to do in life, how much time and energy are you putting into selling yourself versus how much time you're sitting around hoping that somebody discovers you? Now, I know you hear the stories, about people getting discovered. I was just at the park practicing and somebody discovered me or I was some girl was walking through the mall and a talent scout discovered her and then she became a movie star. All right, that happens sometimes to some people, but most of us, it ain't going down like that. So most of you, if you wanna get seen, heard and known, you must create the attention and the energy. It is not going to come find you. It's not gonna wake you up out of your sleep. You have to go do something to create it. All right, number 11, we're on a 12 working your game commandments. Again, actually 13, number 11. The right vehicle commandment. This is an important one as well. All of these are important equally. The right vehicle commandments means you have to choose the right path for achieving your success in life. Just because you are on a path and you believe in yourself and you work hard and you show up every day on the third days and you're trying to sell yourself does not necessarily mean that it's going to work out. What do I mean by this? For example, before I started playing basketball, those of you who know my story know that I play a little bit of baseball. I played baseball for a few years before I realized I didn't really have the talent for baseball. My ceiling in baseball was mediocrity. I was in the wrong vehicle. When I got out of that vehicle and I got into the different vehicle of basketball, all of a sudden things started working out. But guess what? Nobody made me do that. I had to make the conscious decision to get out of that vehicle and get into this vehicle. 
When I got out of basketball, when I stopped playing ball, the first thing I was going to do as an entrepreneur, believe it or not, I was going to I was going to teach people how to market themselves through content. I was going to be like a, a content marketing expert, guru, whatever it is you want to call it. That's what I was going to do at first. But then I realized this is the wrong vehicle for me. It's not a bad vehicle, period. Just like baseball is not a bad vehicle. There Are there people who make a lot of money playing baseball? Yes. But it wasn't the right vehicle for me. So when I got out of the vehicle of playing baseball and play basketball, things worked for me. When I got out of the vehicle of content marketing and YouTube marketing and got into the vehicle of talking about things like discipline, confidence, mental toughness, strategy. When I started talking about those things, things started popping off for me. That's when I started booking TED Talks and writing books and drawing an audience of people because that was the right vehicle for me and my message and my approach. So you had to figure out what the right vehicle is. Just working hard and believing in yourself and showing up every day is not enough if you are in the wrong vehicle. It's kind of like if you're riding a train, any of you live in a town where they have a train, and if you need to go north, but you're in the train that's going south, you can believe all you want, and you can work hard and show up every day and get on that train, but if you keep getting on the train and riding on the train that's going south, when your destination is north, you're not going to end up in the place that you want to be. So you have to take ownership of the situation, go right back to our first commandment, complete ownership, and you got to make sure you're in the right vehicle for you to get to where you want to get to. Understand, there's a right vehicle for everybody out here, but the vehicle is not always going to come find you. Sometimes you got to make a conscious choice. Okay, is this vehicle going to work for me? And then make a decision. Do I stay here or do I move to a different vehicle? And understand that life is all about decisions. Your life is, a, is an accumulation of all the decisions that you make. And you are the one who has to live with these choices. So don't put it on anybody else to make the decision for you. They can help you. But ultimately, you have to make the choice because you're the one who has to live with the results of the decision that you make. Nobody else. Number 12. And again, it's going to be 13 here. The work when you gain commandments. Number 12. The most important, wait, did I skip one? I think I skipped one. All right, so the last one I said was the sum of yourself commandment. Number 11 was right vehicle. Number 12, all right, I think I said 13. Anyway, number 12, this is the last one. Last commandment is the most important commandment of all. Actually, this is the one I put above all of them, is the game commandment, G-A-M-E, the game commandment. Like right on that book, work on your game, the game commandment. What does this mean? It means no matter how hard you work, how, how, how much you believe in yourself, how disciplined you are in showing up, how often you show up on the third day, even if you think you're in the right vehicle, if you have no game, you are not going to get to where you want to get to. You must actually have some game. You got to bring some game to the table. What does game mean? Game means skill, ability, ability to produce results, outcomes. We are in a what? Results based business, performance based business. If you cannot perform, and you cannot produce results, then you have no game and you're not going to get to where you want to get to. All you heard the phrase skills pay the bills. Everybody heard that phrase before, right? All right. It's not a joke. It's a cliche for a reason because it, most cliches are based in some form of truth. Doesn't mean they're always true, but they are based in truth. If you have no game, it doesn't, everything that I said is completely eliminated and erased. You got to have some game. So choose a vehicle in which you have game and you can get the outcomes that you want. So look at the results that you're getting from the marketplace because the marketplace will never lie to you and it will tell you how much your game is being valued. They'll tell you the value of your game. You can increase the value of your game. You probably need to get some professional help for that. But the game that you put out is going to lead to the performance that you give and the performance that you give leads to the results that you have. Everybody got that? Game. All right. That is the, the 12th work on your game commandment. So that is all 12 work on your game commandments. By the way, any of you wants to hear me go over these 12 commandments again, I'm not going to go over them again right now. But if you want to know the 12 Work On Your Game commandments, I actually recorded these on my podcast. It's called Work On Your Game. You can find it on SoundCloud, Spotify, Google, YouTube, you no, know, all those places. Apple is episode 2219 through 2222. Episode 2219 is where I do the 12 Work On Your Game commandments and I explain everything that I just explained. I go through all of it in detail and I explain each one of them so y'all know what the Work On Your Game commandments are. So with all that said, my daily motivation text, you can get it by texting me at that number right there, 305-384-6894. Every morning, I send out a text that's guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point. It's free of charge. All you got to do is text me to get into my community. I send it out every single day. If somebody has a question or comment about anything that I've said here, send me a DM or send me a, a message on Facebook, DM on Instagram, or you can uh, send me a text at my number right there. 
I'll see if I got any, let's see if there's anything that I need to respond to here. I don't think I've seen anything. Uh, yes, adversity, that's true. All, right, all my books are on Audible. Uh, anybody asking about audio books? Every book that I have is available in audio version as well. Uh, you said, I wish I heard this before I got married. <laughs> Good stuff. Shout out to everybody who got married. Shout out to everybody who listened to this. Shout out to Atlanta, Georgia. And yeah, I think I addressed everything here. So and thank you for the badges, people who got the badges. So everybody, I do these lives every now and then. I, I used to do them every day. I don't do them every day anymore, but I do them consistently enough. But you want to hear my voice every single day and hear me explain things the way you just heard me lay this out, subscribe to my podcast. It is called Work On Your Game. You can listen to that at Work On. If you just go to this link right here, workonyourgamepodcast.com, that's where you can get all the links to all the platforms that the Work On Your Game podcast is on. Let me post that on Facebook as well. Those of you who don't know, that my podcast is on work on your game podcast.com and make sure that came through. Yes. Work on your game podcast.com, Facebook, Instagram. Y'all both can see that right there and make sure you text me and get my daily motivation. My experience of getting my books and it is worth the investment. Yes, it is. <laughs> I can just leave it at that. All right. So everybody, we are wrapping this one up. I'm going to do some recording today. I got some writing to do and y'all stay tuned for everything that is coming next. Work on your game university.com. You want to work with me directly, be coached by me, get into my work on your game system. We out of here. Dre all day.